Hello, all my dear friends. This is Maxine Taylor, America's first licensed astrologer since 1969. I have in front of me the United States forecast for May 2023. <clears throat> um, and I'm going to share it with you step by step as I see it. Uh, and those of you who are already familiar with uh, my forecast for the United States, welcome back. Those of you for whom this is the first time, welcome. Um, oh, this is so much better. Glasses, yes. For those of you who study astrology, let me mention just in passing before we start the forecast that the houses of the zodiac are, are interpreted differently in the chart in a mundane chart, which I mean, but which means a, the chart of a country or a city or a business. And so I am going to share those with you as we go through this forecast for the United States um, in May. Some of you already know what the mundane houses are. Others of you may not. Um, and if you don't, if you're not a student of astrology or a practicing astrologer, that's okay. I'm giving the um, astrological reasons for what I'm saying because so many of the people who follow me are students of astrology. So just ignore the astrological language and listen to the interpretation, okay? This is for everybody, um, no matter whether you're an astrologer or not. All right, so let's start with the sun, the giver of life. Um, I've got all this organized here. Now, the sun, and that's the yellow planet here, uh, the giver of life is in the 12th house. It has been in the 12th house for some time, uh, in the 12th house of the United States chart. And in uh, the uh, mundane chart, the 12th house deals with all kinds of behind the scenes activities, which I think are necessary um, <clears throat> in order to protect the information that a country has. I mean, that's that's a given. Um, it deal, The 12th house deals with bribery, with spies, hidden enemies, which it can be enemies on your own team, prisons, jails, hospitals, crime, and criminals, charitable institutions, which is beautiful, seclusion, the past, secret societies, and welfare. Okay. So there, this is, when we talk about the sun in the 12th house of the United States chart, there are behind the scenes activities that have been in play for our own safety, for our own good. Um, on the 28th and 29th of May, the sun, and remember, wherever the sun is, that's the area that lights up. Uh, the sun will cross the ascendant, the Gemini ascendant of the United States chart. It will then, on the 30th, sit on Uranus. Now, Uranus is the rebel. Uranus also rules the 10th house. I didn't mark it here for obvious reasons. Uh, it gets very busy if I start marking up a chart and, and you're not well versed in astrology. So just um, listen up. <laughs> I'll tell you what that means. Uranus rules the 10th house in uh, the United States chart that deals with the president and the party in power, uh, which happens to be the Democratic Party because um, Biden is our president. 
It is the uh, our public image in the world, all right? Um, and so Uranus in the first house of the United States chart, the first house rules the attitude, the political attitude, the mood of the people, uh, as well as public health. And so Uranus is the rebel. Uranus is innovative. And when the sun sits on it, it expands it. And so we can expect uh, right around the end of the month, um, and that is, of course, the Memorial Day weekend, um, certain outbursts, certain rebellion um, coming from all the people in the country. Doesn't mean every single one of them, but what it means is our attitude is can be quite rebellious at that time. Now, when I say rebellious, I am not talking about, uh, you know, maiming and killing and breaking into the White House. Uh, it's not an insurrection. It is, though, Uranus is liberation. And so this means that people, the people, are ready to be independent, to uh, be innovative, and this can be very, very positive. However, it can, it can also have an impact on the president in a very positive way. When I say an impact, it's a positive impact, the result of this. So that's cool. I'm really happy to report that. Okay. Now, we also have a new moon and a full moon. And as, as you know, on the full moon, things come to a head. Um, the full moon this time is on May 5th. And you notice I've marked in the moon here. It's in 15 degrees of Scorpio. On the fifth, the full moon is an eclipse, which makes it even more powerful. The effects of an eclipse last at least a year, probably two years. And so it's on a full moon, things come to a head, but on an eclipse, very strong and long lasting. Now, got to describe what this full moon is doing here. It's in the sixth house. The sixth house in a mundane chart. And I, I'm speaking slowly because I want to make sure that uh, you all hear me clearly and understand what I'm saying. The sixth house rules the military and all civil servants. It rules our jobs. It rules health. Now, I wanna say something about health. This is in, a, in, a, in an individual's chart, this first house and which has the ascendant and the United States has a Gemini ascendant in the chart that I use. This area also deals with health because it deals with the physical body. And so there can be something um, very different about the way we approach our health. Very positive. I love it. All right. So. Okay. So the sixth house deals with health, civil servants our pets, our food, okay? Um, of course, police, fire uh, departments, everything dealing with public health. And this eclipse then will be strongest three to four months after it occurs, because that's how eclipses work. So we're talking about in the fall of the year. Well, let's see. August and September, approaching the fall. 
because uh, we have two more eclipses in October, um, which of course I will share with you. This can bring about a change, a very positive change in all of those areas that I just talked about. And so this is what I'm looking for because the eclipse is in Scorpio and Scorpio is out with the old, in with the new. And so there can be major changes. Um, so hold that thought. Hold that thought. If that's what all of us think, or even not all of us, some of us who can create a tipping point, this can bring about enormous change in every area I mentioned. All right, that's the first lunation. Two weeks later, we have a new moon. Now, things come to a head on the full moon. On the new moon, things begin again. Okay, this new moon will be on the 19th of May. It will be in 28 Taurus. It's in the 12th house, which I just described. And what this says is there it's a new beginning when it comes to bribery spies, hidden enemies, prisons, hospitals, crime and criminals, charitable institutions, uh, seclusion, the past, secret societies, and welfare. So there's a lot that's going to be going on that we will probably not hear about for our own safety. When I say our own, I'm talking about the countries. Now, you notice I've drawn little dashes from the new moon to Pluto, to Neptune, and back to the new moon. Let me explain why. You see, this is like a triangle. That's called a grand trine in astrology. And it, it brings about blessings. It is incredibly benefic. Um, one trine is wonderful. A grand trine, yes, it can bring about changes. Let's talk about the changes. First of all, it is trine Neptune. In the fifth house, Neptune is either escapism or the dream come true. The fifth house in a, a, a person's chart is fun and games and children. In a mundane chart, children. And I'm thinking, we really need a change as regards our children. It is so important that they feel safe when they go to school, that they come home to their parents, that they live to become adults. The fifth house rules in a mundane chart, children, fun, sports, gambling, theaters, uh, congressional and public hearings, stadiums, and teachers. So I feel like this can be, it can be a dream, the dream fulfilled. Um, the new moon lasts two weeks. Okay, that's just how it is. Um, the fifth house also in a, in a person's chart deals with health. Excuse me, doesn't deal with health. It deals with sex. And when we're talking about fun and games and when we're talking about children, I'm going to bring abortion into this because in the fifth house, Neptune is part of a grand trine. And this can bring about the dream come true. You might say, well, what is the dream come true? what the majority of the people want. Not a small group, majority of the people. 
Because remember, the sun is bringing about a certain, a certain amount of rebellion when it sits on Uranus, which it will do on May 30th. Um, so, okay. Then the other part of the grand trine is our dear friend Pluto. And I've talked about Pluto uh, before. This is the planet of symbolic or literal death and rebirth. It's in the ninth house of the United States chart. In a person's chart, it's higher education. It's their philosophy of life. In the um, United States chart, it deals with long distance travel, with people from other countries. Um, it deals with the Supreme Court. There can be big changes there. Foreign travel, religion, the clergy, uh, some of the clergy in some religions have not acted like clergy people. So there can be a change there, hopefully. Higher education, advertising, science, insurance, um, philosophies, world trade, and universities. Now you might say, well, we've got all that going on now because Pluto, the transiting Pluto, the orbiting Pluto has been sitting on our natal Pluto. This happens so rarely. And what it is saying is out with the old, in with the new, we'll have new alliances formed probably, new friends out with the old, in with the new, on all of the levels I just described. And this can all be negotiated behind the scenes. Um, and Pluto, transiting Pluto, will be on natal Pluto uh, back and forth. It's, it's uh, back, uh, natal Pluto is in 27 Capricorn, which means that uh, transiting Pluto is approaching um, and, and actually is in zero of Aquarius. It'll dip its toe in, then it'll come back to Capricorn. Then it'll dip its toe in Aquarius and it'll come back to Capricorn. And by 2014, it will be entrenched in um, Aquarius. It's going to be real different, real interesting. Because Capricorn is a very traditional sign and Aquarius, did I say Uranus? If I said Uranus, I meant Aquarius. Um, Aquarius is uh, universal. It, can, it is co-ruled by Saturn and Uranus. And what this means is that everything dealing with electricity, everything dealing with plut plutonic gifts and talents and uh, international communications, all of that is subject to change. And so when things are looking grim, just know that Pluto is bringing about transformation because that's the biggest thing uh, Pluto does. It's transformation and transmutation. Pluto also rules secrets. And even though it's in the ninth house, the new moon currently is in the 12th of uh, behind the scenes activities. Pluto will continue to sit on its natal position through the end of 2023. So I'll be talking about it one more time at least. And so I, that's the way I'm looking at this beautiful new moon. Uh, unfortunately, it only lasts two weeks. So now let's talk about Mercury. Mercury, the planet of communication, is sitting in our 12th house. 
Mercury has been and still is retrograde. When Mercury's retrograde, I don't have to tell those of you who have been through one Mercury cycle of retrograde, everything is confused. Um, we do not start new projects on a retrograde Mercury personally. You and I do not start new projects on a retrograde Mercury. Why? Because they'll either fizzle out completely or have to be redone within the year. Um, and everything is confused. Some of our uh, people in Congress are saying one thing one week and another thing the next week. Everything is confused. Um, and you might be saying, well, with Congress, you know, they have a constituency to support. Um, yeah, and if you're going from one extreme to the other, tell me about your constituency. No, don't, don't, I'm not interested. <laughs> oh, God. So what we are talking about, getting back to Mercury, when it's retrograde, everything is confused and unsettled. Mercury is going to come out of retrograde on the 15th of the month. Yay. Um, today is May 1st, so we got two weeks, in which time I am hoping that all the negotiations going on behind the scenes, there they are, right there. Mercury is communication. Um, will be resolved and will be able to move forward. Uh, I am I feel comfortable with Mercury behind the scenes because things can be worked out privately very often uh, with more ease than out front with people raising all kind of objections and carrying on and all that good stuff. So I'm I'm feeling hopeful about this and Mercury going direct on the 15th now. When Mercury goes direct, meaning it comes out of retrograde, it moves immediately into what we call the shadow of the retrograde. Um, and every planet except the sun and the moon, yes, the moon is considered a planet in astrology, um, will um, go into the shadow because every planet but the sun and the moon go retrograde. Makes sense, right? Okay, so when Mercury goes into the shadow of the retrograde, um, it feels just like Mercury is still retrograde. I get emails from people saying, I thought Mercury already went direct. Why does it still feel like Mercury's retrograde? Um, because in the shadow of the retrograde, that's what it feels like. You can't, you don't want to start new projects when Mercury's retro. But yes, you can start a new project when Mercury's in the shadow of the retrograde. The problem is that when it's in the shadow of the retrograde, everything feels like a retrograde, which means everything is confused. All right. Mercury will come out of the shadow on May 31st. Ta da. All right. So it's just sitting there. In the 12th house. So let's talk about Venus, the pink planet. Venus is love. Venus is money. Venus is all things beautiful. It's art. Um, and remember the first house? The attitude of the people. I have to tell you, my encounters with people I don't know have been absolutely beautiful. I see uh, love coming from people's eyes for one another, people helping one another uh, with the tornadoes going on. People are loving one another. They're, we're feeling good about helping our neighbors. And then, of course, on the opposite end of the spectrum, there are those who, well, want to want to do damage want to hurt their neighbors. Um, it is what it is. Okay. 
So Venus is in the first house and we are able to be loving and uh, optimistic and uh, our health, our public health, that's what this house deals with, will improve, has been improving. All right, on the 9th of May, Venus moves into our second house of money, but it's more than money. Um, Venus brings blessings. Natally, in the United States chart, if you followed me at all, well, I've been doing these um, United States forecasts, you know, I've gone through the second house. We have a gorgeous second house. Venus, Jupiter, and the sun, the two benefics and the giver of life. It's gorgeous. Okay. The second house in a mundane chart. Now, in your chart, Venus is money and all your tangible assets. And so if Venus is transiting, meaning it's moving through your second house, your personal second house, uh, this is a time when your money increases. <laughs> Excuse me. We are totally pollinated here in Atlanta. Um, it deals with uh, all of our assets, things money can buy. So Venus is in our second house in the United States chart. It deals with commerce and trade, of course, money, earnings, savings, finances. Come on, we have banks being bought out by other banks in order to keep them stable. Stock exchange, yes, banks, debts. And I'm talking not just of the country, but our personal debts. And here comes Venus saying, I'm here to save the day. It sits on its own position on the ninth. And so there should be improvement in, uh, in everything I just described to some degree. Then on the 12th, it sits on Jupiter, the greater benefic, and brings even more gifts of a financial nature. This is really cool. And then it sits on the sun. Now, does this mean that everything's going to ease up financially during May? No, it doesn't. But it does mean that things will improve on whatever level. And I think it's up to each and every one of us to take care of our own finances um, if we possibly can. Otherwise, um, we're in the victim role. And in the victim role, we don't, we don't go anywhere. We don't accomplish anything. In the victim role, we feel martyred and we're looking for a handout. Now, sometimes we do need help. And what Venus in the second hand, second house is doing is bringing help. There you go. Now on the 27th, Venus moves into our third house. And on the 30th, it sits on Mercury. Let me tell you about Mercury in the third house. First, I'll, I'll describe the mundane third house. Communication, news, news reporters, um, the mail, public opinion, books, newspapers. You know, books have been banned and uh, there's been a, a backlash from that. Um, it deals with public opinion, traffic, travel, long distance travel is the ninth house. Uh, short distance travel is the third house. Uh, let's see, newspapers, neighborhoods and neighborhood matters, schools, teachers, and all public transportation. There's a blessing for it, all of those things at the end of the month. Hang in there. Hang in there. Mercury will come out of the shadow of the retrograde at the end of the month as well. And Mercury is triggered by Venus bringing gifts. Let's talk about Mars. Mars is what comes first to us. 
Mars is what we fight with and fight for. And there has been more fractiousness over, over money recently. Well, not just, I mean, for a long time, of course, but things have come to a head because we're seeing the unfolding of the financial structures that have been running our country. Mars, what we fight with and fight for. It's what comes first to us. It's in the second house of money. So we've got Venus blessing our money and we've got Mars focused on it, fighting for it. Um, so it, it's a kind of uh, love-hate thing going on. If this were a person, I would say it's a love-hate thing. However, there can be increases, not only in our income, but in our spending, simply because we're focused on it. Whatever you put your attention on grows. You get a lot of people putting their attention in one area. It's growing. On the 5th, Mars sits, moves into our third house of the United States chart and sits on Mercury, the communicator, okay? Venus comes in and saves the day at the end of the month. Mars on the 10th and 11th has uh, anger triggered, um, a very directness, a, a strong directness in the um, news media, the news reporters, public opinion. There is a tone of anger and impatience, um, traffic, all the things that I mentioned, schools, teachers. I'm thinking of that beautiful grand trine that will could easily bring about a, a change in the school situations involving children and teachers. There have been way too many deaths. And I'm not gonna go back over what I said before. It is absolutely egregiously unthinkable what has been allowed to happen to our children and our schools. I don't have to name the people involved. We all know them, okay? So that's what we're talking about here. I think that that was all I had to share. Yeah, <laughs> that's it, guys. <clears throat> Um, there. I love the fact that Venus is in the second house, will be in the second house. It's going to help. And even Mars in the second house and then moving into the third. It's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens in our money situation and our communication situation, um, particularly uh, when it comes to public opinion. And um, I, I'd i like to see a, a, a change in the book situation. Um, and I understand that this is my opinion. Uh, you, you are not required to feel the same way I do, of course. You are. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion on everything. My request is that we not impose <clears throat> our opinions on each other. Love each other. N not even because of, in spite of perhaps their opinion on something. We are one nation under God. We are one world together and together united in love forget what has been 
placed upon us by the people that run our, our respective countries. If we come together as one, because we are one. And I've said for years, what happens to you happens to me. When I do my full moon ceremonies, I've said, your problem is mine. We are one in love. And if we could just keep that in mind, as the politicians do battle, uh, literally and figuratively around the world, just remember the truth of who we are. We are spirit in an earthbound body. We are love. We are beauty. We are wealth. We are health. We are all that is. We are all that was. We are all that ever will be. And we give thanks for that. So if when you're out shopping for groceries, somebody smiles at you, or if, if you look at somebody and they don't seem to be too happy, go over and smile at them. Bless them. Love them. That is how we reach our tipping point. And so, <clears throat> my dear friends, Till next month when we meet again, my blessing is so simple. May the stars shine brightly on you and yours, on your neighborhood, on your country, on your family, on everybody you meet. Bye for now. See you next month.